Today we're going to review the procedure and materials required to service the Water Group Pura UV 20-3. Today I've assembled all the materials needed in order to properly service the, the Pura UV 20. Before beginning any service on any piece of equipment, you want to make sure that you have in front of you and are familiar with the owner's manual. Each one of the Pura systems is very similar in the way that you change the cartridges in the quartz sleeve and UV bulb but there again each system might have some uh, little differences so I suggest certainly making sure that you have the manual in front of you and you're familiar with the manual. Prior to beginning any service you always want to make sure you test the water. And the reason you want to do this is because water conditions change and you want to make sure that you're not dealing with anything coming in that's going to negatively impact the performance of the unit. So always have your test kit, know how to use it, test the water. The first thing we're going to use is a pair of sanitized uh, gloves, sterile gloves. You want to use these in handling the quartz tube if you can, uh, as well as the UV bulb. Sanitizer. I like using the Santa System sanitizer. This is good for both reverse osmosis units as well as sanitizing any other type of system such as the Pura. Uh, standard Phillips head screwdriver. Isopropyl alcohol for cleaning the quartz tube as well as either a clean cloth or a clean rag. You've got your food grade silicone which is used on the quartz tube in order to insert it into the system. Of course you have your uh, filter wrench for removing the housings. Your quartz sleeve which is packaged inside of this container inside of bubble wrap as well as uh, the UV bulb. Your sediment filter and your carbon block filter. Okay, to begin servicing, first thing we want to do is we want to unplug the power cord out of the socket. Uh, then you're going to come over here and you're going to close off the valve feeding the unit, the, the influent line. You're going to do the same with the effluent line going out to the house. You're going to take your bucket, have your bucket handy, hold it underneath of the bleed valve or test port, whichever it might happen to be. Open that up, bleed off any pressure and water that might happen to be sitting inside the plumbing. Set your bucket down. I usually try to put the bucket, if possible, directly underneath whichever housing I'm changing to catch any spill. Slide your filter wrench up around the housing. Once you get it locked on, you're going to turn the housing counterclockwise or from your right to your left if you're facing it. Once you get it loosened, slide your wrench off. Hold your hand underneath of the housing while continuing to turn counterclockwise until you remove the housing completely. Once you have the housing off, remove your expended filter, sit in your bucket, pour out whatever remaining water is inside of the housing, inspect the threads on the inside of the housing to make sure there's not any debris or sediment uh, in there, inspect your o-ring inside of the housing, the black o-ring that sits inside of the groove there, make sure that it's not damaged uh, if it's dry, you want to take some of your food grade silicone, just a very little bit goes a long way. All you want to do is coat that O-ring, make sure the O-ring is seated properly inside of the, the housing. Uh, you're going to remove the next housing, uh, same way you did the first one, and then take your sanitizer, follow the instructions on whatever sanitizing uh, method you're going to use. With the Santa system, you're going to pour a packet inside of the housing, you're going to put the housing back on, thread it back on. You're going to open up your influent, make sure there's nothing leaking. You're going to allow it to fill up each one of your different housings. You're going to shut it off, let it sit for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, with the water still on, uh, you're going to open up your bleed port again with your bucket underneath and you're going to bleed off whatever sanitizer is left in there. Shut that valve off, close off your influent valve. You can open it up again once you've closed off your influent to relieve the pressure once again. Take your housing back off again. Again, use your filter wrench. You might not have to use the filter wrench. If it's a little tight, obviously use the wrench. Once you remove the housing, you're going to put your fresh cartridge in. There's a tab in the bottom of the housing where the cartridge fits in to keep it from rocking back and forth. Put your hand underneath the bottom again. You want to try to insert the filter. You want to keep the cartridge from bouncing around inside the housing. So you want to push it up as, as close as you can to the center. Once you get on the center, you're going to start to uh, thread the unit back down again, going in the opposite direction as taking it off, which is obviously going to go clockwise with it or from your left to your right. Once you get the unit snug, 
you want to grab it with both hands and you want to give it a little extra turn, about a quarter of a turn. That's all you need. There's an O-ring seal in there that seats it without you having to put the wrench on it to, to really crank down on it. So you want to try to avoid doing that. You're going to do the same process with the center housing. Unthread it off, dump out the water, inspect the threads, make sure there's no debris in the threads, make sure the O-ring's lubricated, put the housing back on again with the new cartridge installed, and then we're going to move on to uh, servicing the quartz tube as well as the UV bulb. Okay, for the final part of the process, we're going to go ahead and remove the housing. Uh, we're going to remove the UV bulb. We're going to inspect and clean the quartz tube if necessary or replace the quartz tube. So once you have all the other filters done, you go to this part of the process. You're going to re remove this housing as you did the other housings by unscrewing. And once you have it all the way unthreaded, you're going to slowly lower the housing, remove it. There will be some residual water inside of the housing. You want to go ahead and dump that residual water out. The reaction chamber inside of here just rests inside of the housing. There's a gasket on top which makes the seal up into the head. I've already removed the screws that control that hold the controller to the mounting bracket. So uh, you're going to raise that up and remove that straight up and out. You can see the UV bulb here is attached to the controller. Uh, by holding the top of the UV, wiggle back and forth a little bit and remove it. You can see there's four holes, receptor holes inside of the controller here that match up with the four prongs or pins on the UV bulb. So we'll go ahead and let that sit off to the side for right now. Now we're going to inspect our quartz tube. Uh, what we're looking for on the quartz tube is any kind of uh, uh, iron buildup or any kind of hardness buildup or scale or, or anything that's going to prevent the UV light from penetrating the glass. If it looks like it's dirty, you want to go ahead and clean it. That's where we're going to use that isopropyl alcohol or you can use any other type of non-abrasive cleaner. Uh, soap and water works really well. Anything along those lines, as long as it's not abrasive. Wearing your gloves the whole time to keep from putting any fingerprints on the quartz tube. You want to hold the bottom of the quartz tube in order to remove it. Hold the top of the quartz tube where it goes into the top of the head and pull straight down. And obviously you can service the unit. When you replace the quartz tube, you'll get a new quartz tube, you'll get a small packet of silicone grease, instructions for replacement as well as uh, two o-rings. So inspect your o-ring up inside the head, make sure it's not cut, make sure it's not damaged. If it is, go ahead and take a small flat tip screwdriver or some other you know, small uh, type of tool that has a uh, uh, small handle you can get up inside of there. Pop that o-ring out, put the newer o-ring in, take your silicone grease and put it around the top inch and a half or so of the quartz tube on the open end. Put your quartz tube, insert it inside of the head, put your hand up close to the top, and applying firm pressure by pushing upward, you're going to push up, wiggle back and forth, and you'll hear it pop. Once you hear it pop, you'll feel it go to the next level. The quartz tube is inserted. You want to take caution not to wiggle back and forth because you'll crack the top of the quartz tube in the head and you'll end up having to replace the thing anyway. So once you have this inserted, uh, inspect again, make sure there's no fingerprints on there. If there are, go ahead and wipe those off. Take your housing along with your reaction chamber. Slide it straight down into the center, all the way up to the top. Once you get it up on, screw the housing back on again. Again, once you get the housing screwed on, you're going to go hand tight and then just a hair more. And that'll make the seal for you. Take your UV bulb. Have your UV bulb. You have your controller. You want to line up the holes with the bulb and the controller. Firm pressure until you feel it seat. Take the bulb. 
Slowly lower the bulb through the opening in the top, being careful not to wiggle back and forth. You'll feel it. If, it, if, it's, if you start to hit resistance on the way down, then you are not lowering it down straight and you stand a chance of, of breaking the quartz or the bulb or both. Once you lower it all the way down, you'll see that the controller rests flush with the bracket. Take your four screws, reinsert your four screws, make sure it's tight. You can plug the unit in. Uh, obviously, the, the light will come on in the front and let you know that the, the unit is on. Go ahead and reverse the process for uh, opening up your valves, refilling all the different chambers, and you're ready to go. Uh, if you follow these different steps, you're going to be successful every time at replacing the cartridges and servicing the UV system on the Pura UV20.